Hey, Orange Army, I'm Joe Rosicki from the Sin Ben Blog, sitting here with Mavericks President and General Manager Brent Thiessen. Brent, I appreciate you taking the time, and uh, I know you're a busy guy, so we'll just get right to it. Uh, this season, season five, has been the best season to date. Um, how do you compare this team to years past, and what do you contribute to their success? Well, first and foremost, thank you very much. Appreciate you taking the time. It's, uh, it's great to do this, and uh, we might have to, uh, to, to do this more often. Absolutely. Um, you know, I think... Uh, I think this year uh, we've definitely found a rhythm, found some success. Um, I think that uh, when you look at this year compared to uh, years past, uh, the big thing that stands out to me is is really um, the, the 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 lack of some major injuries. You know, I think uh, when you look at last year and, and even the year before, uh, we had had some pretty major injuries at this point in the season, um, and. Uh, that forced us to do a lot with the lineup. Uh, it forced us to uh, to shuffle guys in, shuffle guys out. Uh, and I think that one of the big things, you know, you hear people talk about player movement at this level. Um, you know, injuries is a big part of that. And I think when you look at last year uh, compared to, to this year, uh, you had a, a lot of our nucleus, uh, a lot of our core guys that went down with, with some pretty major injuries and, and, and missed a lot of time. Uh, and, and, of course, that forced us to replace them. When you look at this year, uh, knock on wood, we've we've been pretty healthy, and I think um, you know really uh, where we've been forced to uh, to replace guys has has not necessarily been on the injury front, uh, but but maybe more um, on player induced um, types of transactions like Odegaard going to the Olympics. What a great opportunity for him! Uh, of course, that was extended period of time, and if, and we needed to replace him. Um, you, you did have a couple of guys that have left uh, for for other teams that uh, forced us to replace them. Um, and then, of course, the suspensions, which I'm sure we'll talk about here in a little bit. But, um, you know, I think uh, for the most part, we've, we've really seen the core nucleus uh, be together and intact the, the whole year. And, and, you know, really that's been the plan from, from day one. And, and, and of course, uh, you get to year five and, and, you know, it's nice that it's finally coming together. I also have to say, you know, when you talk about success, you know, uh, Scott Hillman has, has grown tremendously as a head coach. And he's done an amazing job this year of, of getting the guys ready to play night in, night out. Uh, we just finished uh, three and three, uh, and you can see uh, that third game. Uh, those are tough. Those are those are grueling for an athlete, and and uh, and and Scott had them ready to play, and and uh, that's a very good Quad City team. Uh, I, I think everyone would agree with that. So uh, Scott's done an amazing job with them this year. Um, I can't speak highly enough of of the hockey operations staff, and and uh, and obviously the staff upstairs as well. Sure, uh, you know with with continued success especially the success of this season you know comes higher expectations do you do you consider this or does the organization consider this a championship or bust season well i think you know uh when we talk about uh championship or bust it's it's certainly something that um, on the hockey operation side of things uh I, I think that's our attitude every year uh you know when when we put together a team uh it, it's with the idea of winning a championship it's with the idea of winning a cup uh, making the playoffs is, is, is not something that, uh, that, that, that we want to, uh, to hang our hat on and say, you know, it was a good season. Uh, I think the last two years we've been awful close. And, you know, going to Game 7 and, and having an opportunity and losing to the eventual winner uh, or CHL champion, uh, we've been right there. And, you know, we've been knocking on the door. And I think uh, this year, you know, we sat out. We, we had several uh, conversations in the summer that, um, we needed to have a better uh, beginning to our season so that it, Game 7 would be played at our house, would be played at the Independence Event Center. And uh, I think that was a, a real goal of ours uh, so that we could put ourselves in a position to be playing for a, a championship or uh, playing in, uh, in late May. You mentioned uh, Coach Hillman. Let's talk about him for a minute. Um, obviously, with any coach in professional sports, he's had his fair share of criticism from the fan base. Uh, but do you believe that it's it's taken five years for him to really instill his system and, and get the guys all on the same page to execute on the same level? Well, I think uh, when you when you start looking at uh, and evaluating a coach, I, I you know it, yeah there has been some criticism out there, and I, I I certainly don't think that a lot of that has been fair. Um, you know, there's there's times at this at this level that um, you know you talk about implementing a system and implementing um, uh, strategies, if you will. And when you start having some of the injuries that we've had in, in years past and you start taking away big pieces, uh, it's difficult. And, and it doesn't matter who's going to be in there. Uh, that's a difficult act uh, to, to, uh, to sit in there and implement and, and do the best with what you have. And I think that, uh, you know, our plan 
uh, has always been, again, to get a good core nucleus of, uh, of guys in here um, that, uh, that, that we know are capable of, of winning a championship and, uh, and, and, and using that lineup and, and bringing it through all the way to, uh, to May. And I think that's actually what you're seeing this year. And I think uh, it's great to see because uh, good for him. I, I think he deserves it. I think he's the hardest working coach in the Central Hockey League. I don't think a lot of people realize uh, how hard he works um, and how many hours he puts in to, uh, to prepare this team um, so that, uh, again, that we, we can go at teams uh, with, in many different ways. And I think uh, that's definitely one of his biggest assets. You know, <clears throat> speaking of, of physical play, uh, the, the hot button topic around the Central Hockey League now is the incident that occurred here in this building on Saturday night between, uh, between the Mavericks and the Allen Americans. Uh, the teams combined for 146 penalty minutes, most of those in the, in the waning minutes of the game. The, the league came down with their ruling, suspending Garrett Klotz for two games, finding uh, coach Steve Martinson and finding uh, goaltender Mark Guggenberger. Do you worry, I mean, last year Allen had the incident with Fort Worth that we all know about. Uh, similar this year. Do you worry that incidents like this affect the league's credibility? Well, I don't know if you, I don't know if it uh, necessarily affects credibility uh, per se. I mean, I think uh, when you start talking about something like that, um, you know, every league has has a, a, an incident like that. Uh, every every league has a story uh, to tell, and uh, you know, I think uh, although very unfortunate. Um, th th this game is, is sometimes uh, very, well, it's all, always very passionate and, and you always have uh, a lot of adrenaline and, and um, you know, it's, uh, it, it's a game that uh, is very physical. And I think that uh, as long as the rules are what they are, uh, unfortunately, uh, you're going to see that from time to time. It's, it's not something we like to see. It's not something we celebrate. It's not something that we market. Um, and it's certainly not anything that we encourage. Uh, but again, uh, you know, I think from time to time, whether it's the Central Hockey League or the, 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 the ECHL or the NHL or, or, or really um, any league out there, uh, I, I think every, every league has, a, you know, some, some skeletons in the closet and, and things, uh, actions that they would like to, to kind of hide away. But uh, again, it's not anything that, that we're trying to promote or encourage. Now, one of, the, one of the most constant talking points among all fan bases in this league has been the inc inconsistency from the officiating that we've seen this year. Do you think that, that it is an issue, that it's become an issue? And if so, you know, what steps do you think the league will take to, to rectify it? Well, I think it's a great question. Uh, you know, it's, um, uh, the officiating is, is something that we talk a lot about. Uh, you know, I, I, I can tell you that, um, you know, Scott and, and, and I have spent many, uh, many hours talking about that and, um, you know, working with the league and, and um, uh, you know, at, at the end of the day, the, the, the league officials are, are guys that are trying to work their way up. And uh, when guys do uh, work their way up uh, and make it to the next level, just like our players, uh, the league has to go out and, and, and get new uh, officials. And, uh, and I think that, you know, one of, the, one of the things along those lines is, is they have to work hard on their end to, to try and get a level of consistency where night in, night out, you know, you're calling the same type of game as, as your partner. And, and uh, you know, obviously, when we travel to Denver uh, and, and play, we want we want uh, as a team uh, a level uh, of officiating that's consistent with what you'd find in Quad City uh, or Rapid City or or anywhere that you go. And I think that you know, I think uh, obviously there's been some frustration there. Uh, but again, uh, that's something that we do talk about as a league when we get together. We do talk about that. Those are things that um, we talk about how. How do we work on um, uh, getting it more consistent? How do we work on, on uh, finding uh, kind of that level uh, that, that, that teams are, are, are looking for and desiring? And, and so I think um, our fans right to, to be talking about that. You know, again, that's, that's, that's certainly what they're seeing. Um, you know, we're, we're seeing uh, some of that and, and talking about that. Um, but uh, we will address that once the season is over with the league and, and with all the member teams. And, and talk a little bit about uh, some of the things that we can do to, to, to maybe improve that. Sure. Uh, speaking of criticism, uh, there, there's been a lot of criticism regarding the playoff format in the Central Hockey League. Eight out of the ten teams make the playoffs. A lot of people think that's too much, uh, that, that there's no reward for teams uh, when 80% when of the league makes the playoffs. Do, do you see it to be an issue, and, and do you think that that will ever change uh, I, in the future? Absolutely. I think it's, a, uh, it's terrible. I, I, I think it's... Um, it's a huge issue, in my opinion. Uh, you know, the Missouri Mavericks and myself uh, ha have been a big advocate for going to six teams. Um, I think eight is way too many. 
Um, I think it's, it's uh, it, you know, it's, it, as far as credibility goes, we talked a little bit about that. That's something in my mind that uh, we lose credibility right out of the gate when so many teams make the playoffs. Uh, it's, it's not a reward. It's, uh, it, it's, it's something that, um, again, I think uh, needs to be changed. Uh, I've said so in, in many uh, governor meetings with the league. Um, haven't had a lot of support in the past, and uh, you know you can kind of see that by uh, by the way that the format is. But um, I certainly hope it will change. I, I, I uh, again uh, continue to to try and get gain support from around the league, uh, but but to me eight is way too many, um, and and I think it's uh, it's not good for the league uh, as we have it. You know, looking at the future, we've seen a lot of success uh, at the NHL level, the AHL level with outdoor games. Um, I, I believe uh, the ECHL is also planning an outdoor game for the future. Has, has there been talks at the league level to, to maybe explore that, that opportunity? Oh, you bet. Uh, we've, we've had uh, several discussions um, about, uh, you know, who would host that, what teams would play, um, is it possible, really kind of doing a little bit of research at this point. Um, I think that there's interest. I think that there's, um, there's, there's definitely teams that want to, uh, to, to play in, in, a, in a format like that. Uh, I think it would be great. I think it would be great for the league. I think it would be great for teams. Um, of course, the, the, the major question uh, is cost. And uh, is, it, uh, is it viable? Is it, uh, is it something that would work? And I think uh, in order for it to, to happen, some of those questions have to be answered. But, but definitely there's interest and there's, there's certainly discussion as well uh, at the league level as to, to trying to put something like that on. Sure. Uh, now let's uh, kind of change pace here and go to some uh, questions that were submitted by fans. Uh, not, only, not only fans of the Mavericks, but fans around the league. Um, the first question actually comes from Keaton. Uh, Keaton is uh, a follower of mine on Twitter, loyal Quad City fan, uh, very much invested in the league. And he asks, uh, regarding your involvement between the Mavericks and the Chill organizations, uh, originally it was planned to kind of be a 50-50 split between the two organizations. Is that still the case? Have you guys kind of changed change routes there, change courses. What's your involvement still with, with both organizations? That's a great question. I think, um, you know, the, 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 in that question, and thank you, Keaton, for that question, um, it, it was never really presented 50-50. Um, I don't know, uh, I, I guess, where that came from. But, um, you know, my involvement with the, uh, with the St. Charles Chill is, is one really more in an advisory role. Um, it's, we have people on the ground uh, in St. Charles um, and, and uh, you know, I, uh, from time to time we'll get asked, you know, how is it uh, being a GM of two teams, um, that sort of thing. And I, you know, the, the, the easiest way to answer that is I, I have nothing to do with the hockey operations in St. Charles. Um, Jamie Rivers is, is there as the head coach and, 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 uh, and general manager, and he has handled all of the hockey operations um, since day one. Um, whether it's recruiting, whether it's, uh, you know, trades and, and, and adding players. Um, and, and waving guys, I mean, that is 100% uh, what he handles. So, um, you know, really uh, haven't had much to do uh, on, on that side of things at all uh, from day one. And I think, uh, you know, really from an advisory standpoint, you know, our ownership group uh, owns both of, uh, of the teams. And, uh, and Patrick Armstrong, who's done a, an amazing job here with the, with the Missouri Mavericks, um, went over there and, and really is the day-to-day -day, uh, executive vice president, but he is the, he's, he's the guy, he's the boss, he's the, uh, uh, the guy making all of the day-to-day -day decisions. And I think, you know, one thing that, that a lot of people don't necessarily understand about this business is it moves very, very quickly. And uh, you don't have a lot of time maybe in between games or promotions, and uh, it, it's really impossible for, uh, for one person to, to necessarily uh, uh, be on the ground and, and making the day-to-day -day decisions of two franchises. And and so, you know, when you, when you look at uh, my involvement in 50-50, uh, we never set out to be 50-50, but uh, I am where I'm needed. And, and I have spent some time over there working with, uh, with Patrick and his staff and, and trying to organize that franchise and, and, and that situation. And uh, I will continue to do that. Uh, but uh, as far as 50-50, it's absolutely not a 50-50 split. And my office is here in Missouri, and uh, that's where I spend a majority of my time. But, um, you know, we do have very capable people over in, in St. Charles making those decisions. All right, next question comes from Mike. Uh, Mike asks, what is the future of the Central Hockey League uh, with, with certain franchises struggling and it seems like a constant flow of teams in and out each season? Well, I'm not going to lie to you. You know, this is, uh, this is not an easy business. Um, you know, I think uh, history tells you, tells you that. Uh, you look at how many teams uh, played uh, minor league hockey 10 years ago, and, and, uh, and then you compare that to the amount of teams playing hockey now, uh, you can see a pretty heavy decline. 
and uh, it's it, it, it's not a, a, an easy business. Uh, you know, there's an old joke out there. You know, how do you how do you make a small fortune, uh, and and you start with a large one in minor league sports, and and I think. Uh, uh, you know that that certainly rings true with with a lot of different markets and franchises, and and um, so y y you start looking at what what's the future of the Central Hockey League. Uh, we we've been looking and, and discussing um, uh, new uh, markets uh, and new uh, expansion franchises. And uh, the Steve Ryan, the commissioner of the Central Hockey League, has has done a really good job of that and having a lot of potential conversations with uh, potential owners and uh, and markets and and, and buildings. And uh, although I don't really have an update on, on where we are uh, with that right now, um, I can tell you that um, uh, there's a lot of activity on that front. Uh, we're not a, a stale, uh, dying league in that sense. Uh, there is a lot of activity. Uh, but, I, but I can also tell you the, the, the absolute truth. And you know, whether it's the Central Hockey League or, or again, any other league, uh, you're going to have some turnover. There's going to be some teams that just can't make it anymore. There's going to be some teams that it, it just doesn't make sense. And um, it, like I said, it's a tough business, and uh, you know we just have to uh, to, to continue to, to put our best foot forward and, and make sure that we've got a great place because we, we certainly have a, a building full of great fans here, and we need to continue to uh, to play hockey for years to come. Just a couple more, and then uh, we'll let you get out of here. Uh, what what's been your favorite moment of this season? Well, you know, I think um, boy, that that's a tough one. You know, I I, I certainly think that. Uh, you look at a weekend like we had, and and you sit down and say, um, you know, Allen is a very very good team. They're 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 a solid franchise, and every year they're uh, one of the top teams. And and to to, to be able to uh, to beat them twice, um, you know, in in games that I think we played extremely well uh, in, uh, and then come back uh, with a Quad City team that, uh, that 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 really is on a roll, and and they're a phenomenal co uh, team, and and they've got a great coach and uh, that they're going to make a lot of noise and uh, to come and, and, and beat them again uh, and have a, a, a six point weekend uh, that's something that's pretty special and uh, I, I certainly enjoyed that uh, from, a, from the on ice uh, standpoint. Uh, it is still early you know we've got a long way to go and uh, Scott has talked with the guys about that and, and, and you know making sure that they understand that you know our goal is at the end of the year it's, a, it's holding up a, a trophy at the end of May. Um, you know, from a, from a business standpoint, you know, we've had a lot of special moments here, and I think um, uh, that's been really neat. You know, hosting the, the, the 1980 U.S. Olympic uh, team members uh, here was, was really special, getting to see some of those guys and, and truly understanding the magnitude of, of you know, reliving that uh, was, was pretty special. Um, you see a moment like we had this weekend where we, uh, we welcomed um, uh, a, a soldier home uh, to his family. That, that was really special. Um, you know, I think we've had a lot of really special memories, and and I don't think it's fair to necessarily pick out one, but but those two, uh, I guess, were were probably at the top of my list as far as being favorites uh, off the ice. So uh, there you have that. Well, I'm gonna ask you a harder one now. What's what's been your favorite moment in, in all five seasons? Well, I think uh, that's a great question, and you know, we've been lucky enough to have a lot of great ones. Um, I think uh, probably uh, Courtney's overtime goal. Um, in, in the playoffs uh, was was pretty sp spectacular, you know, tying it up uh, and then coming back and scoring uh, at the very beginning of overtime uh, uh, was pretty spectacular. This building was rocking and, um, uh, you know, that, uh, that's that been pretty fun. You know, I, I still have very fond memories of uh, the Fort Wayne series, uh, playing them, uh, and uh, unfortunately that was a, that was a tough uh, tough way to to uh, to lose that series, but you know Ed McGrain's uh, uh, penalty shot goal was was pretty special as well. With you know as time w uh, was winding down, and you know there's been a lot of magical moments here, a lot of great goals. You know I've seen a lot of uh, some really spectacular goals, uh, showing off and, and showcasing some of the talent that we have had on this team uh, over the years. Um, it, it's been pretty special. I think uh, you know ma ha also having some of the guys that we've had come through these doors, you know, uh, uh, guys that, uh, that have played in the NHL, that have NHL experience, uh, guys that uh, are, are now playing in the Olympics, uh, guys that, uh, you, you know, tremendous talent, maybe weren't given a shot, but uh, just watching them and having that ability, that's been pretty special as well. So, you know, hopefully we'll, we'll continue to be, make magic and, and make memories, and, uh, and, and hopefully we'll have a lot more to talk about uh, if we do this again here in a couple months. Last question. Uh, five years, just about five years in the books. 
Uh, where do you expect this franchise to be five years from now? Well, I think that's 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 a good question. You know, I uh, for me, um, I'm I'm competitive, and, and and you know what, I don't like to lose to anybody, and uh, you know, I don't care if that's uh, ticket sales, I don't care if that's uh, uh, on the ice. Um, that's a tough thing for, for, for me to do, and, and I know that uh, our ownership group is, is the same way. Um, you know, the, the, the one thing that I have to say is uh, our ownership group has, has been tremendous here from day one. They've, uh, they've given us all of the tools that, that, that we need to succeed, and uh, they've really put the fans first and uh, ha have, have done a really remarkable job uh, of establishing this franchise. Um, now that you see five years and you see this, the, the reaction of, of this community, this town, um, you know, our, our job is to, to, to make sure it's, it's bigger and better every year and to make sure that five years from now we're still having this conversation and we're still talking about uh, all, reliving all the great moments that we've had in, in this building or on the road with the Mavericks uh, in the past 10 years. And uh, my expectation uh, is, is that that will be the case and that we will be uh, uh, a very successful franchise uh, five, years, five years down the road. Appreciate you taking the time. Hopefully. Next time we talk, there'll be a championship trophy sitting in between Absolutely. us. Absolutely. Thank you very much.